So in this video I'm continuing the revision for grade 12 advanced and over here we're talking about magnetic fields now. So looking at this in a magnetic field, very similar to the electric fields, instead of a plus and a minus, we have a, well I'll just wrote plus and a minus, we don't need to write that anymore, it'll be a north and a south. It goes out of the north into the south. Just like we did for a positive and a negative. I had a positive and I had a negative. It was the same thing, right? It will come out of the north and it will go towards the south. In this case, there's, we can't see inside, but it will be something like this. It's exactly the same thing. So they're very similar. North will be 2 and south will be 4. These two numbers here. Very good. Now, over here, we need to see a current coming out. What is the magnetic field around the current? So if this is coming out of the page, the current goes in a circular motion. You can use your right-hand grip rule. Now, this is where everybody starts laughing at me. Here is my right-hand grip rule. I will curl my fingers around like this. This is me pointing my thumb towards me. There are my little nails, and this is my hand, and this is the palm of my hand, and this is my hairy arms. My thumb is pointing towards me. My fingers, look at that, they're curling like this, right? So my fingers are curling. What is this? This is counterclockwise. This is counterclockwise. I need to now find an answer that looks like counterclockwise. This is point charges. This is not going to help us right now. These two are definitely wrong. So over here, A must be the best answer, counterclockwise. You can actually make it easier for yourself if you really want to. You can say out is always, if the wire or the current is coming out, it's always counterclockwise. That means in must always be the opposite, right? In is the opposite of out, so what's the opposite of counterclockwise? Just clockwise. And you can check yourself. Take your thumb, point it in towards the, the screen, and look at your fingers curling. They are curling clockwise. So that's a little, little hint there for you for the right-hand grip rule for current coming in and out of the page. Also, you will be asked to find, yeah, right here, the direction of the field when it's going up or down. So, if it's going up or down, or even left or right, your two choices will be into the page or out of the page. Only then. If the current is coming out or into the page, then you will pick clockwise or counterclockwise, because they're perpendicular. Anyway, this question here, you now have a current and you have a distance from this wire. You're supposed to find the magnetic field. Let's check our formula sheet to see. If I'm sitting on an exam and I don't know what to do, I'm going to open up the formula sheet. Magnetic field, B. B is a field strength. N, number of turns per unit length. No mention of turns. So it's nothing to do with this formula here. This is the only one we can use. We have a current. We have a distance. That's perfect. It says 2 pi r. It's because the, the, the field goes in a circular motion, circular thing. So this is why we have 2 pi r. Anyway, so b equals mu i over 2 pi r. That's OK. We have mu. If you don't know mu, it's written for you. You'll get mu. Where is mu? Here. 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. There's mu. 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 multiplied by i, which we have, which is 3.4, written right here, multiplied, no, divide by 2 pi times r. 6.5 divided by 100, you get 0 0.065. We calculate this. Don't forget the unit. Tesla. Unit for B is Tesla. You will lose marks sometimes if you don't write the unit. Please make sure you remember all the units. Now, this is the bit that people start to struggle with, the directions. So what I will do now is I will take my thumb and I will point it upwards. My thumb is pointing up. If my thumb is pointing upwards, my fingers will curl around the wire, around the wire, like this, one, two, three, four, and around the, so basically that's terrible. That's terrible. Um, I'm going to curl my fingers around the wire. This is going to be a disaster, isn't it? My fingers are, ah, oh, forget it. Um, long story short, right-hand side of the wire, my fingers are going into the page. Left-hand side, my fingers are coming out of the page. So my fingers are going in and out around the wire, in and out. At point P, we're in a direction where we are into the page. My fingers on the right-hand side, if I'm holding my thumb up right now, my right hand, my thumb up, I'm pointing at the screen right now. My fingers are pointing towards the screen. My wire is on the left-hand side of my hand. If I curl my fingers around this wire, I can now see on the left-hand side, I can see my fingertips. That is out of the page. So if point P was over here, you would say out of the page. 
it will be opposite if the current was going downwards, wouldn't it? If the current was going downwards, you will do the exact opposite of that. You would have the current coming down, and if I take my thumb down, I can see that my fingers will be pointing into the page on this side and out of the page on this side. I have made a video using a 3D model in my lesson video, so please go back and check my lesson videos. It's in the playlist, and I will go through this in more detail in that video. So that will be easier for you rather than me spending the next 10 minutes trying to draw a hand. Okay, question two. Stationary positive charge inside a field, which is true regarding the direction of the force. So we have a charge in a field. We're going to see what happens. Now, there's a little trick here. It's a stationary charge. There is a formula to find the force of a charge in the field. There is a formula, and that formula, motion in an electromagnetic field, right there. Why can't I highlight it? I don't know. QVB sine theta. We have to have a V. There must be a speed. If it's stationary, there is no speed. V equals zero, which means if I calculate anything, it will become zero. However, if there was some sort of direction, if I was moving it, we would have to use our right hand rule to figure out which way it would go. If this was maybe going upwards, then you would be able to use your right hand rule. I'm guessing that's going to come up later, isn't it? Um, so I can, yes, we'll probably deal with that uh, later. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So there is no force. Very nice. If there was, go on then, why not? Let's do it. If there was, let's say it moved upwards. It is moving perpendicular to the field. So I will take my V, if I take my right hand rule, it's the gun rule, my thumb pointing up, my index finger will point that way. This is going to point like that. I'm going to just draw and do it just one time quickly for you. I have made a video of this. Yes, that is not a really nice hand. Anyway, this is V, this is B, and this is F. Okay, so now I can see my B is pointing to the right, so my index finger will point to the right. I said that I want my, current, my charge to go up, so my thumb will point up. And then I have my other fingers, like this, one, two, three. And what's going to happen now, my index finger, not my index finger, my middle finger is going into the page. So I would say into the page in this case. Um, anyway, I have way more examples in another video. Let's get on with the idea here. An electron enters a field perpendicularly, as shown. What is the magnitude of the field strength? The magnitude of the field strength? Well, we have an electron, that's a charge, and we know that that's a charge, and that's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So I have a Q. I might, you might think, hold on, we've only got a force and a speed. How do I do it? There's nothing there. No, this is an electron. We have the charge. So we will do F equals QVB, and you're supposed to write sine theta, and this is perpendicular, sine theta, so that will be sine of 90. As you know, sine of 90 is 1. So we can kind of ignore the sine theta altogether. You can do shift solve, or you can rearrange. You just divide F by QV, divide both sides by QV, and you will have it. QV, QV. Also sine theta, divide both sides, why not? Sine theta. This is just going to be one anyway, so I don't need to do it. And you'll get your answer. There is my force, which we have right here. There is my charge of my electron. And then this is the speed. And angle sine 90, you get 1.3 Teslas. That's the magnitude. And it's not asking for direction. It makes me think we might not have to use the right hand rule for a charge in a field. It looks like it cancelled part B, which is good for us. We do need to know it here on a wire. It's the same thing, right hand rule. Instead of writing V, I'll replace this with I, and everything else is exactly the same. Let's see. We have a current passing through a field. We don't know the direction of the field yet, but actually, we do. North to south, right? Plus to minus, north to south, same thing. Now I know that I have a field pointing to the right, so my index finger will point to the right, my thumb will point down, and do I want to try to embarrass myself by drawing it? Yeah, go on then. Like this, this is my thumb pointing downwards. I have my index finger pointing to the right. And I kind of have my middle finger now coming out towards me. Something like this. So, what is that abomination? So the idea is this is coming out towards me. This is my B, this is my V, and this is my, what is it, the force. So I'm taking my hand, I first of all have my gun set up, I turn my uh, first 
finger to the right. So now I can see that my finger is pointing to my right. I then twist my hand down, so my thumb is pointing down, while keeping my finger pointing right. And I can see that my middle finger is pointing out towards me. OK, hope that makes sense. Now we have a straight wire. You have a length. We have a field. We have a force. We need a current. So length, field, force, current. F, B, L, I. Let's check the formula sheet. Obviously, it's given to us here, but you won't get it in the exam. So clearly, we're looking at F, B, L, I. This looks like our relationship. If you have no idea what you're doing, at least try to figure out what formula you can use. You'll get two marks just for writing the formula. And then you put some numbers in. You might get some marks. Get the answer. You might be right. You'll get some marks. Don't forget the unit. You will get a mark just for writing the unit. Even if you just wrote A in the final exam, you'll get one mark for writing A. So please, don't leave anything blank. So we're going to use the formula F equals lib. Lib sine theta still. Did we write sine theta here? Yes, we did. It doesn't matter. Uh, lib, bill, doesn't matter. Same thing. Sine theta, sine of 90 is just going to end up being 1 again. This time they decided not to write it. In the previous example, they wanted to write it. It's just showing us that it, it's fine. You will still get the marks. Perpendicular, that's why I know it's sine 90, by the way, in case you're wondering. I could hear somebody asking there. And so, yes. Now, what's this? LIB, length. 0 0.25, because it's centimeters, multiplied by 8. Uh, oh, no, it's not multiplied by 8. What am I doing? I don't need F. I have F. So we have to rearrange, don't we? Let's go ahead and do that. 8 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 0 0.25, multiplied by the current, which I need, multiply that by B, which I have, and I'm going to ignore the sine theta. Shift solve or rearrange, and you'll get your answer. I hope that's easy enough. Now, finally, two long parallel wires. There's a long, drawn-out way to actually go ahead and figure out why they're actually going to be attracting or repelling. I will not go through that with you in this video. You can watch one my lesson video on it, and I'll explain it if you need to know. It will be useful for university. But for now, attract or repel. Same direction, attract. Opposite direction, repel. Just remember that, and you're done. And I think that's it. Yep, we're done. Thank you.